So hi, Alexandra. We're here at uh, Eternal Research, mm -hmm. and you're going to show us the uh, demon box, right? Uh, yes, this is uh, the demon box. It's uh, a device that uh, amplifies EMF. It's something I invented in my Brooklyn apartment 10 years ago and have been developing it with the help of many other engineers for the last eight years, and now it's become a reality, and this is what it is. So um, we'll get to show you a little bit about that. So uh, what is EMF for people who don't know? EMF is kind of normally considered something that is uh, not enjoyable. It's, it's interference. It's something that is created by the operation of a device that is not part of its intended operation. And uh, the thing about it is, is it has patterns and tones and nuances to it that are very interesting. It's, it's basically the electrical coating, the sound of it, so. Um, so this is just a, a little mouse that has like a little circuitry in there. And that's kind of being amplified many, many times. And you get to hear all the patterns in it just in the, the processing. And then it's moved across the, uh, the 33 inductor ar array. Okay, so it's 33 uh, inductors on, yes. on right. Yes, yes. And then, so what controls do we have on the front here? Um, the controls on the front are mainly levels, and also we have um, auxiliary inputs where you can take external signals and um, kind of blend them together with what the indu inductor picks up. So you can plug a guitar into it. You might need a little preamp to get the level the way you want it, but... Um, it, it will be able to handle external signals and and then it exports in a control voltage, MIDI, note and CV data and also audio, three mono channels and one proprietary blend uh, triphonic channel. So it can really like integrate into a modular system as well then with the CV outputs. Yes, yeah, it's, it's all CV it's all CV no gate or what Yes, what? control voltage. It, it can also do it simultaneously so you can you can do MIDI, CV, and audio all at the same time. So it's, it's really kind of exponential what it's capable of and, and how you can work with other people and, you know, just kind of explore sounds and then just, you know, sample them or make it a performance in itself. Um, also, you know, basically, one source of EMF is just a general phone that you put on there, and it it has all this the sounds and the processing, and, and you know, there was a time when we felt like, oh, what what is even going to make enough EMF to make this interesting? And now we we find a million different things that are creating this uh, sort of usable. I mean, this is just a remote control for twenty dollars. It has like a really cool sort of you know, rhythm that just comes out of it when you press the power button. And can you combine, uh, like, things to put on it? So, like, put multiple, uh, like, multiple controllers or multiple whatever? Oh, yeah, I mean, you can, you can certainly do that if you like. I mean, you can sort of, like, put... You know. And the thing is, when it's, you know, these are, like, what you're combining is an analog experience. It's not something that's coded. It's not a soft synth. It's not... Mi there's MIDI output, but it's not limited by the coding itself. It's something that is organic and is sort of, you know, part of the fabric of the universe, sort of, so. And do you find that, uh, do you find that uh, each thing is the same every time you use it? Or when you go to a different place, is there a different kind of, I mean, is it a different, like, sound or whatever? Yeah, I mean, I feel like a lot of instruments, they, they're about replicating a sound every time. Whereas for, for this, I kind of use it to just like sort of search for something new every time. Because we're not trying to reinvent the keyboard. We're trying to make something that takes, you know, that it can be a companion to a guitar and a keyboard and all these, you know, very, can, uh, you know, long-term instruments that have just existed through time, so. Um, I also see uh, over over there you've got it uh, affecting video as well. So how does that yeah, work? Yes, so the this uh, the CC data um, can be used in a, a software Max um, to manipulate video. So it takes uh, amplitude and various other um, 
parts of the sound and it gets data that can be interpreted in, interpreted in a visual ma manner. So, brilliant. So, when when is it available, and and do you have a kind um, of price point on it? Well, we are currently taking orders, but we're a boutique company, and they'll be fulfilled when we have them available. So, it could be some uh, you know several months, but we had a Kickstarter. We raised over a hundred thousand dollars and um, sold out two hundred units. So, um, we're kind of you know, we're trying to perfect a few things and make it a bit more commercial friendly without sacrificing any of the quality. So it's going to end up being around $700 in the end, but we feel that's a fair price for something that we feel is built really robustly and has a ton of potential. So, Brilliant. Well, Alexandra, thank you very much for speaking yeah. to us. Thank you so much.